Welcome back to Elden Ring. When I look through comments and I check out other videos, a lot of people complain about having to buff up your build, especially because going into a boss fight, it can actually get you killed if you have to do a lot of buffs to get the most out of your build. Also, when you think of a samurai based build, you would think dexterity. However, what I've done is created a samurai build that is going to have blood loss build up in it because of the katanas we are going to use. But I have set this build out to run off strength instead so that we don't have to spend anywhere near as much time buffing up the build. And there is also a fan favorite skill in this build. So just quickly before we do get into this, if you are not currently sub to the channel, make sure you do sub to notifications on a massive massive thank you to everyone that has helped me reach 100,000 subs we did achieve it on the 15th of April 2022 and it has been one of the biggest goals of the channel for a very long time now so I am absolutely over the moon if you do enjoy this video don't forget to leave a like all the support on the channel is greatly appreciated and if you want to support me even further as a creator then check out the links in the description and let's get into the build so we are going to be running a Nagakiba and also an Uchi Katana. The Uchi Katana, the skill does not matter. I just chucked kick on it because you're not going to be bothering with the skill. However, I needed to apply an Ash of War so I could give it the heavy affinity. We do have the heavy affinity on both weapons, but we are going to be running a Bloodhound Step on the Nagakiba. So if you look at their physical attack power, we've got 252 and then a 246 bonus from our strength stat. And with the Uchi Katana, we've got 252 with a 256 bonus. We have a strength scaling A tier on the Uchi Katana and the B tier on the Nagakiba. They both have a 45 blood loss buildup. And the Nagakiba's requirements are a little bit higher. 15 dex and 11 strength on the Uchi Katana. 18 strength and 22 dexterity on the Nagakiba. But the reason I've put the heavy affinity on is to get them to scale off strength so that they are at their very, very strongest when you are using physical attacks. That way we don't have to spend ages and ages buffing up the build. You can obviously do it if you want to. Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength would work really well on this. Commander Standard, obviously, 20% damage and 20% defense. But because we are running a Samurai in the armor slots, we have the Okina Mask. I voted to take the arms off because I was running a different chest. However, you can't really ignore the Raptor's Black Feathers chest when you are running anything that has quick attacks, just purely because you are going to be jumping around a lot to get extra damage from the build. Then I've opted to go for the Sorcerer Leggings just because I really, really like these. And to go with the Raptor's Black Feathers in the Talismans, we have the Claw Talisman. So we have the stack of these two pieces. So our jump attacks do a lot more damage. Then we have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia to greatly raise our attack power with successive attacks. Then because we do have a little bit of a blood loss build up, we have the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. So if you wanted to, you could switch out the Okina Mask and run the White Mask. I've been locked out on this character, unfortunately. But then we have the Star Scourge Heirloom so that we get extra strength in the build as well. You'll see my strength is 55, but with the Flask of Wondrous Physic, the strength will go up to 65 for an entire 3 minutes. And with the Strength Not Crystal tier, we also have the Opaline Bubble tier, just so that we can take pretty much the full hit from the first hit of any enemy. And you're going to receive almost zero damage. So that is the build. If we first test it up in Mountaintops of the Giants... Bloodhound Step is going to be really, really useful for getting in, attacking the enemy, and getting back out. So go in, jump, and slash the enemy, get back out of it, avoid their attacks, then go back in and keep doing it. So you're going to be really, really agile with this build. But as I said, the great thing is you don't need to buff it, and it's still incredibly strong. If we drink our flask... So if we go in, and we do a jumping left bumper... You'll see there's almost 3,000 damage against this guy. You can just see the damage building up. But not only that, I don't know how he's hit me with that. If we do jumping right triggers, we can obviously stagger this guy, and the damage is quite high off this. So if I just keep doing, if I can land them... 
if I keep doing the jumping right triggers, we'll hopefully put him on his face in a minute. There we go, we staggered him. We go in for the chest. 385. Pulls out for 9k. And then when he starts getting back up. Jumping left bumpers and there we go. So he was in absolutely no trouble. We did have to use, I think it was two flasks. But we managed to take him down with barely any trouble whatsoever. And there are other things you can run in this if you want to use the godskin swaddling cloth. You'll get health back if we quickly take a look at some of the talismans you can run. So obviously because we're using Bloodhound Step, there's no point running Shard of Alexander because there's no attack power coming from our skills. We can't use the Fire Scorpion Charm, there's no fire damage. Ritual Sword is okay, it's going to make you stronger, but it's only whilst your health is full. So some things you could, if you're doing the jumping right trigger heavy attacks, you could get some health or FP back if you run one of the Assassin's Daggers. If you wanted to get health back when you're dealing successive attacks, Godskin Swaddling Cloth. If you wanted to get health back when you defeat enemies, take as Cameo. There is quite a lot of choice with this. I mean, especially when it comes to the bottom lot of the talismans. The top ones aren't really going to affect it too much. So one thing I really, really like about this, even though I didn't use it against the Giant, I didn't really need to, is Bloodhound Step. Because you guys will know if you followed this channel during the Elden Ring videos... You'll know just how much I get attacked by other enemies. They just get involved with the showcase all the time. And obviously Bloodhound Step. It's a skill that's going to get you in and out of attacks. Even though I've uh, screwed that one up. But as well as getting you in and out of the attacks. You can kind of just spam it. Like you can panic use it. And it doesn't actually use a lot of FP. It's only going to use 5 FP every single time you use it. So you can kind of just like dash in, dash out, and like when he goes to attack, you can just spam it and get out of the range of his attack. So I can go in with a jump in left bumper, then he's going to go for me, so I can just dash out of the way. And obviously you're going to deal a lot of damage, because the weapons are leveled up. I'm going to die. The weapons are leveled up, you're going to have the Raptor's Black Feathers, the Claw Talisman... You're not going to often deal blood loss build up, but it's still going to be there as a passive effect. Just so that like when it does happen, like when it does land, you're going to deal extra damage. So it's more like an optional sort of thing on this build. I say optional, it's more of a secondary form of damage. So for those of you wanting a build that's either based on strength, you want a build that's based on katanas, you want a build that's based on a samurai, you want a build that's based on agility, like this has loads of different ways you can run the build. And because I've got the heavy affinity, it's based on your physical attack power. So you don't need to go, oh, I'm going to build up my arcane so I can focus on the blood loss, or I need to build up my dexterity to focus on that. It's pretty much just all based on your strength stat. You obviously can chuck some arcane in there for the blood loss build up, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. I just strongly recommend doing everything you can to build up your physical attack power with this. But obviously, as we all know, arcane and bleed builds are, at the moment, the strongest thing by a long shot. I was kind of I'm in an R in because I've put some really, really good builds together, like my Super Mega Double Bonk build. But I mean, because of its maneuverability, because of the agility and everything, the Arcane Bleed does obviously win. But that was a look at the Strength Samurai build that I've put together using the Nagakiba and the Uchi Katana. And what we're going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.